recording. Hello, Hello. ladies. Hi. It's been a little bit. How are you guys? Great. Good. Good. Today's been a pretty uh, weird and surreal day for me, I have what, to tell you. What happened to you? What, what'd you do? <laughs> well, I became an American citizen. Yay! Yay. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Yeah, it, it's a pretty surreal experience. So initially, originally what you're supposed to do when you become an American citizen is you go and um, into the room of like a thousand people and this judge talks you through, this is what I'm told, talks you through what it's like, what's about to be an American citizen. And then you do the swearing in ceremony and then you watch everyone get their um, naturalization certificates and it's it's supposed to be a very moving experience and they play the national anthem Aww. and mine mine was not like that oh, during no. COVID I, I had the COVID the COVID version <laughs> uh, we had to obviously we had to wear masks um, and uh, and we just go in through this side door everyone is wait <clears throat> everyone being like it's everything is very scheduled so mine was at 10 45 a.m. so you're there don't come early, don't come late. You're there at 10.45. You go through security, go right in, go to a kiosk. Person asks you a couple of questions, like has anything changed since you did your civics test? And you're like, no. And they go, okay, raise your right hand. And you're like, okay. <laughs> and then repeat after me. And then you do this, you say this oath, the oath. Um, uh, and then um, and then they say, give, gave me a flag and said, Welcome to America, American citizen. Aww. And I was like, uh, 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 <laughs> I cry with a mask on. Aww. You can see this is catching. And um, and they're like, go to go to desk number 23. It was almost like being at the DMV, but with no line. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, okay. And you're like, you go to desk number 23, and they handed me this naturalization certificate. Hang on, I'll show you. So I get this. So this is is what I leave with. Ta -da! You're like, oh, Aww. Aww. But I leave with this. Ooh, don't have that information. But I leave with this American flag. And I'm like, okay. You should Yay. stay. It's so cool. Oh, I will. I will absolutely. Um, but yeah, so I, I leave with an American flag and and the naturalization certificate. And then as I was walking out, there's one guy at the exit, and he's got he's holding three flags and he's going. Phew, phew, congratulations congratulations as you exit and you're like thank you <laughs> just me walking through Aww. thank you so you can bring it for each person that's quite the exercise but yeah so a very different experience than what other people have experienced becoming citizens but um and it was all happened in 10 minutes including security In, out. wow and previously it's been i've been told it's been upwards of three hours Damn, so quite the expedited process for right now. <laughs> yeah, it kind of works for us because, you know, we're so busy and I have to get back to editing part three of Gabriel's Inferno. So, so it kind of works. So very exciting. Good stuff. Yeah. How about you guys? How has your day been? Yeah, not too uh, bad. Just great. Along. I'm a, I picked up a few more books to read. Um, I went to the Rift Bodice. They recently reopened for like in-store browsing. They used to be just doing um, packages during quarantine, but they reopened and I was like, ah, give me <laughs> more romance books. So I went and picked up a couple of fun new ones. So I'm excited about that. Oh, yeah. 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 Really? I, uh, Brian and Daisy and Bodhi, my dog, are up on the central coast in Cambria right now. So working from the lovely central California feels really nice to be out of LA for a few days. Um, yeah, but we've been looking at the trailer for part two of Gabriel's Inferno. And as most of you know, it's coming out on um, July 1st, which <laughs> somebody pointed out so kindly that that's only about a week away or a little more. So yeah, yeah but um, I got really excited and major chills when I watched it again today, just a little oh, bit ago. I can't wait oh, to see that's it. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. I love the wallpaper behind you. Yeah. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm in a room that's not mine. It's pretty interesting. It, it, there's a lot of interesting decor here. <laughs> <laughs> be nice to get away. Yeah, yeah it is nice. I, uh, so, I, what, are, I, what are we discussing today? Well, um, 
I was going to, well, we're discussing quite a few things. We have, this is kind of going to be like, we don't have a guest, so it's going to be the update podcast. Okay. We're in different states, especially ours, are starting to reopen now that COVID's not gone, <laughs> but, you know, we have to start getting somewhat back to the way things were so our economy doesn't collapse. So as carefully as we can, we're going to talk about um, what's going on in terms of that, as well as some development updates different project updates and yeah just giving you a little here's what's up (laughs) well you just recently read something really amazing why don't you tell us about that did and i i actually i think we posted about it over the weekend and i reposted the post that ali posted and um this author so i read the book queen move by kennedy ryan which i absolutely adored i cannot talk about how much i loved this book so good (laughs) Um, so if you haven't read it, you should read it right now. Um, she, it just released end of May, like May 26th about, so it's fairly new. Um, but it's on Amazon. You can catch it anywhere. Uh, but I read it and then I posted about it, (laughs) retweeting our post and Kennedy Ryan actually commented, this made my day. I was like, (laughs) that was awesome. (laughs) A little starstruck moment. Kennedy Ryan. I've met her a couple of times and she's a really, really sweet woman. So, um, yeah, I, we may or may not have spoken to her about possibly doing something with Queen Move, but we'll see what happens. Um, that's my little like very <laughs> low level tease um, of that book, but I really adored it. And if you haven't read it, you should read it right now. That's awesome. I yeah. got excited too. A lot of our fans were commenting on that post and saying um, how much they love Kennedy Ryan also, but also giving other book recommendations. So I'm, I'm kind of pumped about that because yeah, some think- of the books I hadn't heard of. So. Yeah, yeah. it's really cool. Well, fingers crossed. I would. Uh, it would be really amazing to make Queen Move. I agree with you. It's a really fantastic book, and thank you, thank you for reading it so quickly and oh, for yeah. jumping in there. My pleasure. My pleasure. Um, and, and Tosca, I believe we have recently been um, mentioned a bunch in the press. So we've had a couple of different articles yeah. come out, recently, which is really exciting. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about what that's been like, getting more, a little more momentum in the. PR world. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's really, well, firstly, thanks to Ali, because she's really doing an amazing job oh. trying to get our word, trying to get the word out there. But, yeah, it's, you know, I'm really grateful for all the people um, that are supporting us and, and that um, Passion Flix is getting out there into the world. Um, <clears throat> you know, it is, it's a little unfortunate that sometimes we get knocked a little and, and, um, and our genre is, is uh, maybe, not spoken of as well as we would love it to be spoken of. But I, um, just just from my perspective, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, um, my um, my view of our genre is that it's incredibly empowering to women, um, that it removes shame from sexuality, that it encourages communication and connection in human beings, and that we strongly encourage love and. Um, And I'm so grateful to our genre and I look forward to speaking to many more um, journalists in the the future and and telling them about how fantastic our genre is. You know, actually a great person, um, some great articles have been written by Sarah Pollack, excuse me, Sarah Pollack, and um, she's a strong advocate for our genre and speaks very honestly about, um, about, you know, what other people think about it, but what, what, what it really means to us. And I think we should focus on the positive and think about what it means to us and and not um, spend too much time worrying about what um, naysayers will continue to say. Um, So um, yeah, so that's my thoughts on that. But yes, but I'm I'm really excited about all the press opportunities that are coming. If there are any other opportunities and anybody knows um, anybody, any journalist that would like to speak to us, please, touch base with us at um, press at passionflix.com and um, and then we will um, Ali will <laughs> will connect with them but yeah thank you it's been great I, I appreciate the yeah. um, the the getting out there yeah the awareness yeah. it's fun to spread the word <laughs> It is, and I love seeing all the new fans. And we've gotten a lot of Facebook messages, Instagram messages from people that are just hearing about it. And yeah, Sarah Beth is awesome. And um, I, I, I love seeing, there's a lot of people tweeting us after her articles go up and it's really, it, 
brings me joy. It makes me really happy to read all of those tweets and messages. Yeah. But also, it makes me so happy to read a romance novel, especially right yes. now, you know? We are in such a strange um, place in the world. And, you know, we've all had to take a moment back to step back and just really reevaluate everything that's important to us. And, um, and, and there's so much um, concern and angst and, and worry that's going on that sometimes you just need to sit down, have a moment, and read something positive about people who care about each other that has a happy or hopeful ending. This is what we need. Um, it encourages love and communication. I mean, I think that's one of our, the strongest attributes of the romance genre. Yeah, it's a lot of escapism, which is great. Yeah. Um, yeah. What else? So um, another thing <laughs> we were planning to talk about is that um, we've had a lot of questions recently, especially with everything going on right now with George Floyd and Black Lives Matter and that insanity. Um, we've been at, had a lot of questions thrown our way about adapting more books from Black authors and people of color authors, um, which is a totally fair question because we need more diverse cast and stuff. Um, but I wanted, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about that, Tosca. Sure, absolutely. I, I think one thing to, to please keep in mind is that our company is only two years old and into our third year, we hit by a pandemic. <clears throat> so um, we, we have produced as many films as we possibly can in, in a very short period of time, which is more than most studios have. So while we don't have a wide range of diversity, and I absolutely agree with you in that, um, that has always been a goal of ours to change. So it's, it's or, or not even change, but to just have diversity. Um, uh, you know, we're not able to miraculously get um, content on the site without um, being able to film. And um, so we, we still are making, um, we have Brenda Jackson's two books that were scheduled to go now. And obviously that's not happening right now because it's not safe to film, um, but they will be filmed and we look forward to having them on the, on the platform. And we have many other books that we are approaching authors um, continually. And, you know, I think it's really wonderful that more and more authors are getting their work um, picked up by everyone to to be made into movies, and um, you know, unfortunately, we are play we are um, not unfortunately. I guess in a, in a way, good because we're able to compete with others to a certain degree. But we are going against some of some very heavy hitters. You know, we we cannot mm -hmm. compete with Netflix. So if um, if an author chooses to sell their book to Netflix or to one of the big three. Um, we we just have no we have no no way of competing with them, but we will try, and we have honestly made many. Uh, we, we've reached out a lot to many authors um, of color and um, black, brown, um, and um, and Asian and Indian, <laughs> um, and um, and um, we we just haven't had the opportunity yet to secure too many um, of those books. So hopefully, hopefully soon. Yeah. And I think too, um, I, I, our fans have such high expectations and they love passion books so much that they think if we send an offer to an author that it's an automatic yes. And it's, Not I wish. Yeah. <laughs> just, I think it's from, you know, we've gotten the feedback sometimes that some authors just don't see their books being made into films, which is completely understandable. And we respect that. But um, I, I, I've, it makes me happy though that they our fans think so highly of us that we should just be able to go to whoever we want and get the films but i think that's one thing that is important to share is that we have approached many authors and and for whatever reason sometimes it just we can't move forward with the movie and and that's that's that yeah actually sometimes the their books have already been optioned by someone else oh yeah that's waiting true. we're waiting for them yeah. waiting for either those options to expire we are connect, we're trying to contact the producers that have optioned those books to see if we can make them together so so we are we're reaching out in in many different ways to try and get um all sorts of stories and this is not just um uh uh, black novels. This is also mm -hmm. any novel. Anytime somebody has optioned a novel that we really want, we we try to uh, find the window to go after that novel to make for passion flicks. And you know, I, I I truly do hope that the authors 
um, see in Passion Flick something a little different than some of the other players and the fact that we work so closely with our authors and we have such a high respect for their work and we know that we're making this for them and for their fans and we love it and we are fans ourselves and so uh, you know that's what we have to offer that's maybe a little different than some of the um, the Netflixes and Hulus out there yeah so definitely please come to us <laughs> and I also and please and do keep sharing. Oh, sorry, I was going to say keep sharing all the recommendations on social because we actually we do read your comments and Everything. I am I I've been reading up a storm especially since we came up here. Someone recommended a couple the motorcycle club books which I've never really gotten into, but I'm having a lot of fun. So <laughs> just send them along. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I also wanted to touch upon the fact that um, while right now the focus is on racial diversity and, and more inclusion and equality, which it always should be on that. Like no one, we're not equal until everyone is equal. It's a very real thing. But a big issue with just the romance genre in general is that for a very long time, the majority of romance authors have been white, they've been telling white stories. The Ripped Bodice for the past, I wanna say two years, has been releasing a diversity report to show the percentage changes in how many people of color authors there are and different content and stuff like that. Um, so if you want to check that out, please do. It's, it's very- Really good of them. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah no, so them. And they, uh, they, those girls also, just to plug them for a hot sec. Please it's, do. It's exciting for more romance things to be happening. And they have a deal with Sony Television, I believe. And they just optioned a Beverly Jenkins book. Oh, that's um, amazing. Which was really cool. So that's, you know, just more things are happening, which is exciting. Um, Again, but we can't compete is, with Sony, so that might be a little, <laughs> we can't compete with Sony, but. We can't, no, but but I remember when I first brought that up to you, I was a little sad because I was like, oh, like, yeah. what you, you know, like we, we're doing that exactly. But Tosca was, you've always said like, it's actually wonderful because it just means more yes. things are happening story-wise, which is, is. great. Yeah. We get to see the stories we want to come to life and, yeah. and, and then more people find us at Passion Flicks after. That's. We've seen so many of those messages coming through lately saying somebody just watched another book ad adaptation and now, oh my gosh, I just found Passion Flicks. So I think, it's, I think it's pretty incredible. Well, I think that's amazing. I mean, one of the reasons why we started Passion Flicks was because these kinds of stories were not actually making it onto any platform or any network. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as fans, we want to see these, these books come to life and we want to see them come to life in the way that we want them that we imagine them and so anybody that is that dedicated to the romance genre that is able to put together a you know book to film adaptation I'm like go for it this is awesome I'm so excited I can't wait yeah. to watch it it's going to be amazing and maybe we can get it for second window as a distribution deal on passion flicks yes that'd be awesome um so yeah uh, I just wanted I just wanted to say that it's a it's a book publishing world problem first that's carrying over into ours but it has been really wonderful to see like different tweets going out recently from publishing houses or different agents being mm -hmm. like, if you're a black author, send me your work. I don't care if you're not represented. Like the time is now, like, <laughs> let's see yeah. what you've done. And, you know, so progress is being made slowly, but it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so cool. Thank you for talking about that to you, um, yeah. starting the discussion. Um, and well, what else? Oh, so that kind of leads into our ability to film things. You did not <laughs> a little bit tough. Oh, that old problem. <laughs> that old yeah. Problem. Um, so yeah, should we talk about some of the new COVID guidelines? Yes, filming in in uh, in COVID. So you know it, it's it's. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we, we get we get these the, they're, they're guidelines, and I'm I'm constantly reminded they're guidelines. They're not law, but um, you know we want to follow the guidelines. People's safety is paramount here, um, and um, but yeah, at the end of the day, the, the guidelines are extreme, um, the, and it's they're there to make sure that everyone's safe. But it is um, if I want to film anything in the United States, myself as a director or producer or um, anybody that's in, in this inner circle, being the, the closest to the actors, um, we have to have COVID tests three times a week, if not every day. That's one thing. Everybody else has to have a COVID test once a week on a Monday or Tuesday. That's basically, you know, the, the first step. Um, they, they've divided us into zones, zone A and zone B, and then um, in zone A, um, ideally, we'll wear masks, except for actors who obviously can't wear masks. Um, 
during um, while, while filming together, but if they're not filming together and we're shooting somebody else, then can they wear a mask? And um, But the rest of the people need to wear full PPE with face masks. Um, and, and we have, and, and that's hard. I mean, that, that's hard. A, it's hard to um, really do that and wear that every single day, but it's also hard to source that. It's hard for me as Tosca and Passion Flicks and to go and find full PPE gowns every single day, um, fresh, you know, fresh PPE for every single person on set that they can then, you know, throw away and, and use the next, and you get new ones the next day. That, that's, I mean, hospitals have a hard time getting this. So with face shields. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't realize it was full PPE for zone B. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, that's what they're asking. That's the guideline. They want, what, sorry. And what, what is zone B? Or can so you zone A is, um, and there, I mean, the, the guidelines are like 30 pages. So there's lots and I'm yeah. kind of raising everything here, but um, zone A are director, actors, uh, DP, um, the, the camera, anybody who's close, who has to work close together, anybody that has to talk directly to actors who can't wear masks. Um, and, well, DP and them, they can wear masks, but, but we're, we're in very close proximity. We're, we're within six feet of actors. So, um, so we have to, so that's zone A, um, and I'm sure I'm missing some people. Um, and zone B is anybody that does not have to be within six feet of us. And so they're, they have to remain six feet away from us at all times. Um, the, you know, it, in a way, it's kind of great because I get to, it. It uh, decreases the number of people that are around us while filming, which may decrease sound, and you may, we might be able to move a little faster, maybe. Um, but I mean, no founding members would be allowed to come set at all. Um, <laughs> every single person would have to do COVID tests and. Um, have some sort of proof of quarantine, you'd have to stay six feet away from everyone. You wouldn't be able to take photos yeah. with any actors. You wouldn't be able to be close to anybody. Um, so it's, it's, while it's allowing people to move forward because people do have to move forward, I still think that it's putting a lot of people at risk. And, um, and, and uh, I don't think that as, as much as I love making movies and Passion Flix is all about making movies, I don't think that it's worth putting people's lives at risk. Um, mm -hmm. And so I would rather just wait a little, let's see how things are going. Let's, mm -hmm. um, let's just make sure that as we start to open our states um, that we, uh, you know, maybe there's some other precautions that we can take. Maybe a vaccine will come around in the fall. Um, but mm -hmm. um, for us, I mean, our, our next film is um, that, you know that we weren't able to film was wicked um and that takes place in louisiana and i don't see that happening before the end of the year maybe september october november um excuse me um i just i don't know i i i don't see that happening in louisiana right now um i i speak often with the producer i spoke with jennifer armantrout as well and um you know, we're keeping, we're still prepping, we're coming up with previs, we're coming up with storyboards. And, you know, right now we can't even get um, our, our actor out of Australia to come here and make it. So we have to, we just have to make sure everyone's safe. Nobody wants to make films about um, being close to each other in a situation where people are scared. And, and we don't want to yeah. make people feel that way. So we will patiently wait, and I appreciate everyone patiently waiting with us during this uh, very unusual time. Um, we have Gabriel's Inferno Part 2 and 3 coming out, and um, uh, we do have some plans of um, maybe making some movies outside of the country. Um, I don't know if I can chat about that, but we are, you know, you guys all know that Louise um, Alston, who did The Will, she's from Australia, and she's actually in Australia right now. And she'd love to make another film for us. And Australia doesn't have the same restrictions as, as us right now. So possibly we'll make a film in Australia. Wow. Um, we have a lot of Australian uh, founding members who would be excited. <laughs> yeah, the Australian yeah. founding members, you finally get to go. It would be amazing. I mean, um, and of course, Australia is beautiful. And um, I, I just have to stay, I have to do a 14 day quarantine in a hotel in Australia before I get to go to set. So I guess that's my vacation. I'm having a vacation um, to you, which is totally fair. You're working your buns off. <laughs> exactly. My vacation will be 14 days of quarantine in a government designated hotel in Australia. <laughs> you still have Wi Fi, so we'll probably still answer emails. 
exactly. Yeah. I will still be doing podcasts. Yeah. Um, Although I heard you might not be able to get out. I I, yeah. I read something yeah, today now problem. saying, yeah, it's it's wild. Yeah. Just, what happened one third of our office went to Australia and was on Australian time. <laughs> it's so weird. But, you know, I don't, this is not forever. This is no. a change and we're all learning things. I mean, at the end of the day, we're learning even things about hygiene and space. And I think that um, <laughs> a lot of these things will actually be, and washing our hands. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of these things will be things that hopefully we take with us post pandemic. We don't need to not wash our hands all the time. <laughs> we should wash our hands all the time. What a concept. Uh, what a concept. <laughs> and when you are sick, you should not go to school, you should not go to work, and we should have things like paid sick leave, and we should have all these mm -hmm. things available to the people that work for us in the various, um, you know, various play situations. So um, anyway, that's my political <laughs> advice there. Paid sick leave. Yeah. You funny, yeah, I think I think of our funny talks in the office for everyone that wants to know what we're doing Every day, I think we talk about a different country. Maybe we can go film here. There's no COVID cases yeah, there. Hilarious. Yeah, we've gone. We've gone to Australia's a big one for us, and we've definitely we've recently looked at Croatia. But I'm like, what could I film in Croatia? Everything is this like old world feel. And I'm like, we don't have anything that that needs such needs those locations. So I'm like, Australia. Uh, we can't. Yeah, we can't go to many places. So. Yeah. But, but but on that, you know, ju just everyone should should know that we are spending this time actually developing so many scripts. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have um, this man that's coming up. We have the we have fueled and crashed still coming up, and wicked that's coming up. We have tangled that's written, um, resisting roots, uh, a man's promise and a lover's vow. We have. Um, uh, the Amy Benson story uh, that we're uh, yeah. yes, yeah. Sugar Daddy. It's like oh, oh, what we're in the process of currently writing Sugar Daddy. Lil Lisa Klee passed right? the first draft right now and is going to give us notes soon, which is exciting. Oh, that's amazing! Oh. Yes, so we are spending this time developing as many screenplays as possible, which is something that that we don't normally have that much time to do. So now that we are in this this space, we're like, okay, how can we come out of this pandemic with still the support of all of our subscribers um, and a whole bunch of screenplays that are ready to go and we can meet new directors, although I'll be heartbroken not to direct every single one of them because I love them all. Physically impossible. Hard, and everyone's like, you can't do them all. And I'm like, that's just not there. I want to. Um, but yeah, but, um, but I, I, I trust the, you know, someone like Louise is really great and, and we'll find some other directors as well to, to truly, um, make these movies in the way that we love them to be made. So, yeah. So was there was any other particular questions on development or, or production? I think, I think that covered most of it. I just, I just had a little note to say that if you, if you're interested in reviewing the restrictions for filming yourself, you can find it at sagafra.org. Uh, um, they've got all that stuff listed there. And um, yeah, it's basically all the unions in, in the U S um, the film unions have, have come together and, um, very smartly put together this proposal and um and so we are trying we, we're looking at it and seeing what we can make happen for us and I, I also feel like it's going to start being a small fight for equipment and other things like that as more of like the bigger studios get running again because they all had to stop projects as well it's like oh that's interesting. <laughs> pretty yeah. soon um but it's going to be a madhouse and we're going to have a hard time well, we own a lot of our equipment, so that's fortunate because um, we, we ended up buying it ourselves. So, yeah, but it also would be a matter with, of crew. At the same time, we have a lot of incredibly loyal crew members that work with us. So um, I, I'm, I'm not actually sure that we will face that because we're very fortunate that we've had the same crew on many of our films for the last couple of years. And, and they're incredibly loyal and wonderful human beings who, who you know, we, we get to work with. So... Yeah. yeah, I think it's going to be tough for a lot of people coming up. And we had we had a couple of questions from people about possibly doing more quickies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Would that is that easier to do than a feature film? It is because of the number of people that are involved. So if we have a quickie where it's two actors and it's only those two actors and we're filming for two days, 
we would be able to just do a COVID test once, the entire crew, and everyone will stay, um, well, the crew is much smaller on a quickie. They're about 15 people as opposed to 50. And so, <laughs> so you're able to stay further away from everyone and, and, um, and we can film them very, we can film, we can film our quickies quickly. <laughs> right, um, is pretty much. <laughs> so I think um, Ali actually sent me one today. Um, which one we already have. have. Which, which we already have. have. Lauren. We just haven't announced it yet. We just haven't announced it yet. And I'm, I'm like, I'm waiting for you guys to, to we, come up with that. But. I'm, I'm so tempted for you just to say the author because everyone will lose their minds. But then I don't know. because <laughs> Maybe I should oh, give her the heads up. I think I think that you should do you should do your normal announcement. Because yes. Maybe but everyone's going to be really excited. Yeah. Um, well, I will take this time to plug and say, if you're an author who's listening, uh, yeah. or if you know an author who has a short story, really short, it's like, like um, short stories can sometimes range from like 30 pages to 100 pages. With our scripts, when we transfer them, they get turned into about 15 pages. So I would say something in the 30 to 40 page range. If you have a short story that you think would make a cute short film for us, please send it to lauren at passionflix.com. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, please, please. please do. We can definitely do quickies. You know, we can... Um, we can prep them and we can shoot a, a quickie every couple of weeks. You know, that's, that's really easy for us to do um, because, uh, because we're not able to shoot anything else. It's not easy for us to do in the, in the normal scheme of things, but it, in this sort of situation, it is much easier for us to do. Very cool. Um, and yeah, keep your eyes peeled for more exciting announcements from us as, as mm -hmm. things come to play in terms of development and trailers and things like that um so keep, stay tuned and if you have any questions feel free to leave it in the uh comments below or to send them to info at passionflix.com we also check our email there um and thank you ladies thank this so good to have you guys back on a podcast <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm gonna go finish my glass of wine in celebration of me being a citizen i think that's Woo! a good idea <laughs> i'll go get a glass, of wine, glass of wine just to celebrate oh thank you <laughs> all, right. all right bye guys Bye.